Hello everyone, welcome back to Great Beard's Garage. Uh, it's been a little while since I've had a video out. Been a lot going on here around the garage. Uh, the problem is with this wonderful southern Arizona summertime, the heat has been just deadly. Uh, over a hundred plus degrees for almost two months now. And every time I try to video, after about five minutes, the camera's overheat and shut down. So to show you a little bit of what we got going on, this is the project I'm going to continue on today. Hopefully, uh, you know, you'll enjoy this. But what I've got, we're doing another repaint on the Sportster here. I just kind of got bored with it. Uh, went and redid this front fender. Kept the distressed look on board and did this tear out graphic, which you can see. It didn't turn out half bad, but eh, it's just didn't pop the way I wanted it to so we're redoing this and what we're going with this time to give it a little bit more pop and gain some attention is still keeping the distressed look but we're going to go with some old school flames and patriotic of course you can see here this is ready to start clear coating uh, I am by no means a professional painter this is you know anything that anyone can do my base coat is literally rattle can and I'll show you that this is my one of my paints of choice it is rust-oleum this is rust-oleum camouflage army green <clears throat> so we got two coats of that down and what I'm gonna do is go in and uh, we're gonna wet sand this that way uh, my airbrush is going to actually adhere to the paint uh, as you'll notice this fender is not even remotely smooth straight you know it, it really needs a lot of body work to it but there's a reason for that this is a 1953 panhead fender and I like the mystique of its age you know I don't want it to be perfect I could but I don't want it and this paint job isn't meant to be perfect you know let's say we got the distress look going on here I did bring the tank down to bare metal and start over with it and I'm not going to do the same with the fender I just love that rugged look so that's where we're standing here uh, other projects we had my truck my ram uh, I wanted to video that but couldn't because of the heat I had to put a fan clutch and alternator on it but once again after five minutes time the cameras would overheat and shut down so we're going to try some things here see if we can't get this going for you and uh, hopefully enjoy this so hang on for the ride and most of this will probably be time lapse uh, until I start getting to the airbrush and show you what I use and how I do this so this is by no means a DIY this is how I do things you know there's a lot better paint out there but hey doing this as cheap as possible by the time i'm done with this this project should be well under a hundred dollars all right so hang on let's go for a ride star here on the fender what I'm using is just a cheap $35 airbrush off of Amazon it's Chinese made it works really great it's had great reviews there's even one video out there where a professional artist is actually comparing this airbrush to like a $300 developers airbrush and he said for general work it works great of course you know for high dollar custom paint don't bother 
invest the money on a good airbrush. Uh, the paint I'm using is Createx Colors Wicked. This is the standard regular Wicked White. Uh, I love these paints. They're water-based. It's an easy cleanup. Um, you don't have to worry about expensive thinners and things of that nature. These run, depending on where you find them at, between about six to eight dollars a bottle. And these things last a long time. I've had this one here probably a year now, and I'm just now about to run out. So I said this paint job is not a perfect paint job. It's not meant to be a perfect paint job. I said I like it to be distressed. And uh, the thing that's going to be nice on it is when we do the main graphics. But this right here is pretty much just uh, to get the effect I'm looking for. So it doesn't use very much paint. There's maybe a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of paint here. I'm running probably about 20 PSI. And I'm actually, because my wife works from home, I can't run my big air compressor. So I've got a small air compressor in the bed of my truck that's hooked up for my train horns and uh, at some point I'll show you guys that and how I set it up so uh, this is what I'm using so if the air compressor kicks on I apologize This paint job is far from perfect. It's not meant to be. You know, for one, I'm going with this uh, military theme to it. Uh, I've painted several vehicles in my time in the military, and I'll tell you, there ain't nothing perfect about it. Just grab stencils and a spray can, and off you go. Anybody can learn airbrush. Um, it's not hard at all. The biggest thing is getting your paint mix right for your air pressure you're working with. Uh, you, know, you can spend the money on the paints like this or even some that cost even much more. Or you can just use the uh, 99 cent a bottle water-based acrylics you can find at Walmart or any art store. And it's just a matter of getting the mix right. You, know, you kind of want like a uh, milk consistency. That way you can get the flow. The thing I like about the Createx paints, they're pretty much ready to shoot right out of the bottle. We're not going for perfect. So it's no different than an actual military paint job. They just pull out a spray can and a stencil and have at it. And 99% of the time, the graphics aren't going to be straight. We have all kinds of overspray usually, inconsistencies in the color. But you know, I'm going for realism here as to what you'd expect. If I was going for, you know, a show type paint job, yeah, I could go in and make this perfect edges and look, everything. See, it's even kicked off a little bit, but hey, that's fine. You know, anybody in the military would know that's what you're going to get. And I've used just about three quarters of that paint, so like I said, this goes a long ways. So we just put this back into the bottle. I'm going to need it later. And as far as cleanup on these water-based paints, it is quite simple. You just grab yourself a paper towel. And what I like to do is reach in, wipe out the majority of the paint inside of the reservoir here. And just plain old cheap Windex. Just flush it out. Now, 
one thing to keep in mind with white paint, you have it has a bad habit of causing tip dry, and that's where the paint will collect on the needle. All you do is just pick that off, and you'll hear it when you're spraying. It'll start hissing or popping, and all you do is just you know, if you run your uh, needle guard on there, just pull it off. Use your fingernail and pull it off, and charge on. So there we go. It is now cleaned out and ready for the next color. That's all there is to it. So I'm going to do is give this a few minutes to uh, dry. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of sandpaper to distress it a little bit. And then we're going to start laying out the uh, patriotic flame graphics.